guys might remember this. This is the cast iron straight edge that my buddy Lance sent me that I'm doing some trade out work for. He did some tool grinding for me and this is one that he needs to uh, get machined. So uh, he sent it to me for me to do. So we're gonna go ahead and get started on it. What I want to uh, start with first though is just kind of dress down the uh, high spots of the casting. Like, like right here, there's a high spot there. These little raised areas. I'm just gonna try to dress that down on the top of it here or maybe the back. There's some uh, high spots there. So I'm just gonna kind of even out the cast first with the uh, hand grinder. And then we're gonna go to the KNT mill and I'm gonna make this a mill project. We'll probably start with, uh, we'll put this in our eight inch vise. We're gonna mill the ends and the top to begin with. And then once we do, we'll start rotating it and uh, getting it milled in. The angle, I haven't decided uh, how I'm gonna do it, but I think I, think I have a game plan. So anyway, let's, uh, let's go get started on it. These are a couple wheels that I just recently bought from KBC Tools. I uh, just got two different brands here, the uh, CGW and then the other one is Superior Abrasives. These are stripping wheels. You can use these to strip paint or polish metal with. And th they work good for things like this where you just need to knock down some high spots or polish it or deburr. Or if you want to polish metal like this table right there, or if you got something that you want to do some stripping, you know, paint stripping, that kind of stuff, they're, they're excellent for that. So I just got a few. I just thought I'd show you what I'm going to use here. I think I'm going to try the uh, Superior, though, and uh, see how it does. I'm using my sandpaper trick here in the vise. Just got a coarse sandpaper taped to the jaws. And this always helps, uh, it helps bite in on raw castings. And it provides with the uh, uneven surface that you're trying to clamp on there as well. So I think what we're gonna do is start with this side. I don't know what side this would be considered on this straight edge, but we're gonna start, we're gonna cut this one since I've already got my face mill set up. And then I'll take that out and uh, do the side milling. And then once we get this one done, we will take it out and flip it that way. And then we'll deck the top of that one right there. I think that's the, I think that's what we'll do. Or maybe we'll, uh, we'll deck this one, deck this side, and then put the end mill in there and do the side. I think that makes a little bit more sense. I just want to get it kind of equally spaced here. So it's four and five eighths, four and seven eighths. Um, I do need to check level here. I'll probably run an indicator across this right here just to make sure that this casting isn't out and it's kicked at an angle, you know. So we'll get this kind of averaged out across the surface and then everything is going to be square to that one. Let's give it a check, see what it does. Okay, we're a little low on that side. Looks like we're about 25 thousandths low on that end right there. So I might just put a jack under there so that we can uh, slowly control how we move this thing. That's uh, indicator says minus five. Minus 10. Let me try that right there. Minus five. Yeah, I think we're averaged out pretty well right there where it's at. 
We're ready to make our first pass across the prism here. Uh, I touched the corner off and I fed down what I think is going to be a cleanup. I'd like to try to clean it all up at one time. But if it looks like it's not going to clean up this edge here, we'll come back and start over again. So we're uh, from touch off, we're 155,000 steep on the, on the back corner. And hopefully it'll just clean up this front edge. Lock the table here. first pass across the uh, the first side there and we got it all cleaned up and it looks really good very nice to turn it in the vise you can see we've got the uh, first side that's been machined right there and it is, it is nice and smooth we've got everything clean dust free we've got a parallel sitting down there in the bottom that we're going to use to raise it up so so we're going to go from that side and we're going to rotate it back one i'm going to leave the sandpaper on this side to uh, push against that edge right there and we'll just be pushing it against the machined the machined side so let's get it even again i think it was uh four and seven eighths is what it was supposed to be yeah go this way just a just a touch there we go all right 
tighten it up and we'll just just seat it all right there we go and then i've got these again we're going to put these little machinist jacks we're going to have to raise them up now just want to put them underneath the ends just to kind of help give it a little bit more stability out here on these uh on these ends here looks like we're going to have just enough yeah okay we'll have just enough I'm just going to just finger tight it just like that and then we'll do the same on the other side there. We're going to establish our uh, touch off here. See if we can get it. Looks like it's cutting all the way across there. All right guys, here we go. Uh, I touched off and we're going to take 30 thousandths, so hopefully that'll clean everything up nicely. After the first pass across this uh, side here, I went ahead and uh, fed it back the other way, take another ten thousandths, only because that um, that first initial pass, I was feeding it ten inches a minute, and I, it, the finish was fine, but it was a little bit coarse for what this is going to be used for because this is going to be scraped in. So I thought it'd be nicer to kind of match what I did on the on this side here, which is five inches a minute. So we did five inches a minute across there, and I like that. It's got a lot smoother feel to the, uh, the finish there. So I think we're just going to continue to finish all of them at uh, five inches a minute for at least our finish pass anyway. So we're going to go ahead, and uh, I'm going to take the face mill out, and we're going to go ahead and side mill both sides of it right there with an end mill. And then once we do that, we're going to break all this down, I'm going to have a totally different setup to machine uh, what, what is now the bottom here and this angular side there. total of an eighth of an inch but you can see right there at the very top a little 
voids in there. I'd like to go ahead and clean that up and uh, get those out of there. So make another pass across there, clean it up. We got both ends of it machined now. That did really well. Uh, I'm really uh, surprised but uh, happy with the way that this iron is machining. I was worried there was maybe be some uh, hard spots in there that they call uh, chill whenever they cast them, but this has been good. It's been soft and easy to machine. Ends look good, top and bottom. Well, the top and the back looks good. So time to take it out of here and we'll change our setup so that we can finish out our last two surfaces. All right, we're set up and ready to machine the other two sides of the prism. And what I'm using this time is my Carver machine vise. So these are manufactured by a company called Carver. They're out of the UK, so they're uh, European made. I had a viewer probably three, four years ago at least give me this as a gift. And I used them several times over on the current horizontal bore mill when I was at motion, as well as the vertical mill. There was a there was a few times I was making these large brooch plugs and I had to mill a big keyway in this uh, brooch plug and this was the uh, the perfect setup to be able to hold that big brooch plug in there and uh, mill them. So I've got them bolted down with two 5 8 bolts on uh, each side right there. This one is the fixed jaw so this one you just bolt it down. You've got just enough room underneath this uh, moving jaw here to, uh, I use a, a uh, not a combination square, a machinist square to square this one up nice, then bolt it down and get it nice and tight. And then what I do is I put a toe jack behind it there because I have found that even though you've got these things bolted down real tight, it still tries to push it back if there's nothing to back it up there. So toe clamp back there keeps it from trying to move after you get so much torque on it. The uh, This one here, same thing you bolt it down it bolts the center block down and then you tighten up this nut which actually pushes the orange housing that way and then you can draw each one of the jaws down with this nut right there and we've got it we've got the uh, square or the uh, straight edge I mean bolted down you can see I got my parallels nice and tight tap down we've got brass shim stocks in between there to uh, to protect the surface. You can see these are some deep serrated jaws on there to really kind of bite in and hold on a workpiece there. So just trying to protect that, that side. We should be good to go. I've got everything tight. And we're not taking any kind of big heavy cuts. We just want to touch off here and just clean it up. You know, maybe 20, 30 thousandths, hopefully. And we'll see how that does. And uh, once we get this side done, we'll go ahead and flip it over and I'll, uh, you know, get the angle nice and leveled out, 
and we'll hold it the same the same exact way to uh, machine this angular side there as well. So we're ready to roll. Let's go ahead and start doing our cutting. chatter there in the center and I think what I should have done was put a machinist jack under the, the bottom there to support it. Didn't think about it until after I started making the cut so I'm just going to let it finish out and uh, we might make another cut across there to we'll see how the finish looks. Unfortunately, my uh, little machinist jacks is too tall to go up underneath there. This is a common problem that I've had several times where the jacks are just too tall. It's almost like we need one half this size. It'd be a nice shop project to make a small set of, a shorter set of machinist jacks. So, uh, next quick solution without spending a bunch of time was to use like an adjustable parallel. But in this case, I'm actually using a big planer gauge that I have. And I've actually got this snug underneath there, okay? I just adjusted it until it was uh, snug and I can kind of slide it back and forth, but it is tight. So maybe that'll help uh, dampen the vibration in the center. Come around here, you might be able to see it right there. See it? It's also um, a little bit low too. There's still, I mean, it's cleaned up, but I can still tell it just barely cleaned the surface up. So we're going to take another 10 thousandths. I slowed it down to uh, 246 RPM to kind of reduce the uh, surface speed and help, maybe it'll help eliminate this little bit of chatter right in the very center. The rest of it did really good. It just started right there and then went away as it went across. We're speeding back the other direction now.
That second pass did the trick. We took a total of 30,000, so it was 20,000 the first pass, and then we came back that way and uh, took another 10,000 off of it, and it cleaned up nice. There's no chatter, it wasn't bouncing or anything. So I think our planer gauge right there worked, plus slowing it down one notch on the speed really helped there. And it's nice too, man. It is just silky smooth, that finish on there. Really happy the way it turned out. So, all right, it's time to loosen it and I will get it rotated, leveled out, and then we'll cut this last side right there, that angular side. All right, we're just lining it up with the uh, protractor there on 45 degrees. That's what this angle is actually cast at, at 45 degrees. And this is not a critical dimension. It doesn't need to be indicated or just dead nuts on 45. That actually gives uh, clearance whenever you're scraping in uh, dovetails on, on lathes. The uh, dovetail is usually 60 degrees, so 45 degrees gives you plenty of clearance because they, they stick this thing up inside the dovetail and then they raise it up to do their print and then pull it back down and, and get it out of there. So we've got her lined up very, very close by sight on this scale uh, with the protractor set at 45. And what's neat about these uh, carver uh, vices right here is that once you, once you get it tight here, once you get it squeezed, you can actually crank these guys down and it actually pulls the uh, it, it pulls the workpiece down onto your parallel tight. So we've got it down tight on the parallels now. So we're ready to go ahead and uh, start taking a cut on this thing and get it cleaned up. Here we go with our first cut. Doing a 20,000th depth here.
definitely got a low spot on this side here, so we'll have to make us another pass down it. This is our uh, results for the first pass there. You can see we didn't touch right in this area here. A little bit low. This side looks beautiful. I can see a little bit of low right in there as well. So we'll just take, I think we'll do another 20 thousandths and uh, come on back all the way down that side. And I think that'll probably clean that up. We'll see. Looking good. We're almost done. up taking 30 thousandths on this last cut right there and you can see we still got a little hollow there to clean up I did I did my 20 <clears throat> come in it was still open there so I took another 10 didn't quite clean it up so that was 30 thousand but that also helped clean up this uh, edge over here on this side but I think I'm gonna bring the cutter back down to this side here and let it cut into the sharp edge right here to kind of help eliminate any chipping because we got to take one more to clean this up, plus the, uh, you know, the, the very corner of it. I want to clean that up there as well. So probably another 20 to 30 thousandths is what we need to take off there to clean it all up and make sure that edge is cleaned up. I think we're going to get it that time.
Okay, our prism straight edge is now uh, fully machined and I have uh, filed all of the edges so everything's rounded off nice. So the uh, mill work is now done, but there's the actual work on this is far from over. What's going to happen with uh, this prism here is uh, Lance is going to end up surface grinding it and get it as flat as possible using the machine. And then once he does all the surface grinding on all the edges he'll then hand scrape this in so i did uh in fact confirm with him that this is a this is a scraping job or a job in general that he's doing for a customer there so this is something that he's doing for somebody else so machine it in you know get the rough casting off of it surface grind it nice and flat and then hand scrape it in fact i've got a i got a short clip there of another one that he just finished up that I'll throw in right here so you can see what it looks like whenever it's finished up. So the other thing that I want to uh, bring up before we end the video is this appears to be nice and straight and flat, right? Well, I've got my straight edge out. This is my precision ground straight edge and just doing some visual checking on all the sides. It is not flat. It's got a slight amount of curvature to it. All right. That side, it's pivoting in the middle. All right. So we got a little bit. So it's sort of curved that way. All right. And then whenever I check it, if I check it this way right here, this is the side that we just machined, right? I can see a little bit of a gap in the center. So it's actually bowed in the center that way, right? And that's, I imagine that's because of the, uh, the clamping forces that I put on it on the end, squeezing it like that. And let's check, uh, I'll go ahead and check this side right there. I'm going to have to clean it up this way and pull it in there. All right, same thing. You got a little bit of a bow to it in the center. So he'll definitely have to get this thing ground in so that it's nice and flat. There's tricks that you have to do in order to, whenever you suck it down to the mag, to keep the bow uh, from pulling back into it once you release the mag. So that's a whole you know, trade in itself and uh, tricks that you got to do to try to continue to get it as flat as possible. So that's just an example right there um, whenever people, when they're curious and they ask questions, they're like, why can't you just mill it? It's flat whenever it's milled, but no, it's not, in flat, it's not perfectly flat and you have to hand scrape it to get it there. So machine it, surface grind it, and then hand scrape it so that you have, you know, anywhere from say 20 to 40 points per inch along the surface there of even straight contact in, in a, in a nice, even plane there. So. I think that, I honestly think, because I've been machining these cast iron pieces like this for a little while now, if I do this on the shaper, like the straight edges I've already done, I typically get on something like this about a half a thousandths out of flatness across one, one face right there. When I do these things on the miller machine, I always get more than that. I always get a few thousandths out. I think that if I would have done this on the shaper, it would have been a lot more flat than doing it on the K&T mill. So anyway, my work is done here now. I'm going to get this thing sprayed down with some rust inhibitors so it don't start flash rusting. And I'm going to be actually hand delivering it to Lance because we got us a little weekend camping trip coming up soon. So I'm just going to take it with me and give it to him and then he can start his, uh, hand scraping on this prism. They usually tap the ends there as well. And uh, they have like handles put on the ends so that whenever somebody is using this to do your checking, so you're gonna use this surface here, you have your handles and you come in and do your print and then pull it back out and then read it. So there we go, all finished up. Hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you on the next job, all right?